This is an introduction to the APL language. APL stands for a programming language. It was invented in the 60s. It originally worked on large machines, mainframes they were called. There were no PCs then. And it now works on PCs, Windows, Macs, Unix, and also on large mainframes. It has been used all over the planet and it's still a very in use today. To start APL, you do it just like any normal Windows application by using an icon on the desktop. And to stop it, you can use the little X right hand corner or by entering right parent off in the session. APL can do many things from very simple calculations to very complex applications. For example, if we use this little icon on the desktop, which starts an application entirely written in APL, we can see that it's just a regular application with a menu, menu buttons to minimize, maximize, and close the application. And that you can use the menus to do things. You can click on some of the items. It's just a normal application. APL can also do simple stuff like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and so on. It can do it with numbers, whole numbers called integers, or with fractional numbers called floating point numbers. For example, here we can subtract 9 from 21 or multiply 2.5 by 2, 3.5. Or we can add two numbers like 3 and 4, 0.5 with 2.1, and even more complex expressions. We can subtract numbers. 10 minus 4 is 6, 4 minus 10 is minus 6, but look, the minus sign is different, it's a high minus sign, it's a sign that belongs to the number to specify that it is negative, just like the dot in a fractional number belongs to the number, meaning that there is a fraction there. Here we can have a closer look to negative numbers, all the negative numbers in this line, the ones on the left are negative, they all have a negative sign. And the ones on the right don't have one. The minus sign belongs to the number. Well, multiplication is the same. You can multiply 3 times 12. And here, if you notice, we're using the math symbol multiply, which is a little cross. And where do you find that little cross on your keyboard? You should have it right on the same key as the minus sign. But to get it, you have to use the control key. So control minus gives you the little cross there. On some APLs, you even have a little bar on top of the session that allows you to pick the cross, or any APL symbol for that matter. If you want, you can add comments to your code or to your statements by supplying a little lamp at the end of your statement. That little lamp is used to shed light on your statements. So for example here, you have the 175 times 3, but we have no idea what it is. So as a reminder, you put in that it is a price times the number of items. Later, when you come back to your line and you look at it, you can then remember what you did. The comments are ignored by APL. So here, only 1.75 times 3 is taken into account. That lamp symbol can be obtained by using Control m or by using the language bar. Division. Here's another simple function. Here we can divide 21 by 3, 93 by 10, and again, if you look carefully, you can see that the symbol uses the one as in mathematics. This symbol can be found on the top right corner of your keyboard, next to the little cross for multiplication. Makes sense? Lists, vectors. APL can operate on several numbers at once. Let's say that you have three additions to do. You don't have to say one plus three, Wait for the answer, 2 plus 6, wait for the answer, 6 plus 21, wait for the answer. You can do them all at once. 1 and 2 and 6 plus 3 and 6 and 21, and APL gives you the answer right away. A number by itself is called a scalar, and a list of scalars is called a vector. For example, on top we have 77, which is a number all by itself, and look, I'm using the comments there. And three simple numbers is called a vector of numbers. APL is very tolerant when it comes to applying a function to a list or to a vector. If all the numbers are the same, you can simplify that by putting only one number. As an example there, you can see that 5 plus 5, 5 plus 3, 6, 21 can be simplified by simply using 5 plus 3, 6, and 21. 
Here's another example. We want to add the number 1 to 3 numbers. So we say 3, 6, and 21 plus 1. And APL does it for us. But if, if the lengths are different, but are not just 1, then APL has no idea what to do. In this example here, you have two numbers on the left, three numbers on the right, and there's no way for APL to determine which one goes with which one, and therefore a length error is issued. Spacing is only important between the numbers. For example, if we don't put a space between 2 and 1, it will be interpreted as 21. Same as in the example below. If we don't put in a space between minus 1.25 and 0.2, APL will have no idea what number we're talking about and will issue a syntax error to tell us that it doesn't know what we were trying to do here and syntactically it doesn't make any sense. So now we understand why we need a special character for negative sign because we can have several numbers. If we had to use the subtraction symbol as a sign, then we wouldn't be able to tell whether we're trying to subtract or that we mean that the number is negative. For example, here we have 2, 3, minus 1, minus 3. Is this a list of four numbers? Is this 2, 3, minus 1, and minus 3? Is it 2, 3, minus 1, minus 3? APL doesn't know. We wouldn't know ourselves. For that reason, a special symbol has been created for negative numbers. So that's it for the introduction. If we have a quick look, we can see that uh, we know that off exits APL, as does the little X button for Windows version. APL can act as a calculator. It's very easy to add, subtract, multiply, divide. We can use the lamp to add comments to our statements. That negative numbers use a special symbol, the high minus. That vectors are a list of scalars, and scalars are just simple numbers, simple items and that two vectors can be used in calculations but that their length must be the same or that one of them must be one. So that's it. I hope you liked it. That was an introduction to APL.